What did the fox say? Alright, welcome back party people. Today, we're replacing the RockShox Super Deluxe R. Alright, if you watched my last video, you may recall that I was in the process of removing the RockShox Super Deluxe and doing its 50 hour service. And you may also recall that I snapped off my hex wrench in one of the bolts that holds on the bearing mount for the shock. And I noticed that the bleed port was leaking a bit. Just looking through the RockShox Tram website and looking at what it takes to, to actually get some oil back in here and uh, rebuild this thing. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit timely, so that's probably going to be something for a cold, rainy day or snowy, icy day sometime in the winter so we're putting this aside for now i have decided to actually replace that with meow fox factory dpx2 that's right i went with the dpx2 because i've had the x2 before and i know on a medium frame on this bronson there is uh, very little clearance on the side of that shock tunnel so what we're going to do is try out the DPX2. This is the 2020 model. So um, I've already opened this box as you can tell, but let's reveal this bad baby. So first I uh, ordered the bearing assembly mount kit. I wanted this to be as smooth, just like the RockShox Super Deluxe R was. And I know it has the bearing mount on the lower. So uh, we are going to do the same thing and so this is the part number for the 8 by 30 millimeter bearing assembly that works with the DPX2 and we had to make sure that we ordered a bushing kit for the for the upper part so the upper part of the shock will be bushing the lower part will be bearing which is equivalent to what the the, Rock, the RockShox Super Deluxe is and just in case I ordered a spacer kit for the rear shock. Um, this is uh, compatible with most all of Fox's uh, shocks here. So we're gonna tune the volume a little bit. I don't know what, I've actually opened the shock up to remove the canister just a bit so I can replace the stickers on the shock itself, but I have not looked at what type of spacer and the compatibility of what I can actually use, but I'm probably gonna reduce the air volume in this shock. So we have those. I'll show you the bearing kit. We have the two bearing surfaces here. Two bearing outers and the shaft that fits in like this. So we have to remove the eyelet mounting uh, bushing in one end of the shot, the lower end. And we'll, uh, we'll press this in on the other end. So there's our bearing mount. I've already removed the, the bushing. As you can see, it, it, the shot comes and I've, also, I've already removed the, the bushing in the lower end, which I'll be pressing the, uh, the bearing into this lower. And we have the bushing mount. I've already installed the spacer kit for this, which gives me a uh, eight by 20 spacer, which is what the Santa Cruz Bronson V3 requires. And the bearing mount surface is 8 by 30 check out the snazzy camo which I think will go nicely with the camo theme I have on the bike with the with the front fender I need to do a couple things here first I need to remove the outer air canister sleeve and take a look at what volume spacer is in before I press the bearing in and uh, check the compatibility matrix and then also uh, see which uh, spacer we want to put in here. So I'll probably go with a medium duty spacer in here to reduce the volume a little bit. I'm just going to remove the sag indicator ring here. And this should unscrew pretty easy because, well, I've already unscrewed it before. So I hope I can do it with my hand. So yeah, it's always uh, easier when you're unscrewing this canister is to press in toward the threads because it has a natural kind of vacuum. Kind of grab it down at the bottom and once we have the threads it'll naturally kind of move down and we'll pull it down and we can see that it looks like there's a purple 
Let's see if you can see that. There's a purple spacer in there. So I want to go see what the compatibility is and what the reduction is there and uh, possibly change that out before we press mount those uh, or before we press the, uh, the bearing mount in the lower. So let's do that. All right, I'm just going to show you this real quick. I'm on Fox's site on the, uh, the actual bike uh, service procedure website. And I'm just going down to rear shock um, service. And down here, you can see air volume reduction for uh, 20, 2002 to 2020. Uh, float, float X, float DPX2 and DHX air rear shock. So I'll just click on that. And it will give me the air spring curves and... Uh, a uh, video there of how to actually change the volume spacer but what I'm looking at for down here is uh, my particular shock so we'll go down to DPX2 shock volume spacers I have uh, the Bronson's a 210 by 55 um, length eye to eye shock and stroke and so you can kind of see here purple gray light blue and too high do not use uh too high so those are you you don't want to go uh if you have a 210 by 55 you don't want to use the medium blue or the dark blue you want to either stay gray or light blue or purple and uh what we have inside here is a looks like a purple and i'm going to change that out with the gray because that's going to be the mid medium and I might end up putting the, the light blue in. So I'll show you the difference in the size of the gray and the light blue. All right, so these are the only two choices we can have. What's cut, what uh, came in originally from the OEM, which for the 210 by 55, we looked in there and it's the, the purple. And then we have the gray and then we have the the blue and I'm going to turn these around like they're installed here so that's the that's the difference in thickness of these and I'll remove the uh, the purple one here and I'll show you that but uh, I'm going to go with the gray because that's kind of the midpoint and we'll start there I don't want to get too too progressive all right so they usually show it taking their thumbs like this and removing there's a little o-ring in there you have to kind of remove and slide up so and you see that so i just pull that down a little bit and then there's the metal spacer in there that you want to pull back as well all right let's remove the volume spacer i'm just gonna use this uh end of this allen key here and just kind of pry this out it doesn't take much and uh there's the uh, the purple volume spacer and uh, the difference with the gray spacer, which we're going to put back in there. Purple spacer that came in the shock, gray spacer that we're going to put in the shock. Now we're going to just apply a very thin film of grease around the O-ring that sits at the top. And we'll get our gray spacer. Just snap that in. With the counterbore facing the sealed in here. Just put the spacer back down and put our rubber o-ring back down. Now we'll close her up. I usually like to use my other hand to kind of once you push the canister up, hold it up under the edge there on this particular shock. And that keeps force up into the thread. And that makes it much easier to actually thread the, the canister on. Because there is some resistance. Alright, now we'll put our sag indicator ring back on let's uh let's press the bearing in here and if you're curious on how to actually install the bearing well on that same website you can go down to rear shock service and there should be eyelet hardware maintenance you click on that and it will walk you through the process of installing bushings or servicing the bushings and if you scroll down far enough you'll see the procedure for actually pressing in the bearing and there is uh, some things that you need to take note of where the bearing can actually be pressed at. And on this particular shock, the DPX2, can only be pressed down in the lower, which is, I think they refer to it as position one. You can see here, they're going through this on a uh, 
coil shock, but it's the same procedure. So basically what we're gonna do is uh, um, start with step number eight here because this is where they put it back together. So you, you wanna grease the inside and then you wanna use your soft jaw uh, vise to actually press the bearing cups in. Go to the manufacturer's website. They have a lot of good information out here and they publish it for a reason. So if you're gonna do your own DIY stuff, I think it's really, I tend to stick with the manufacturers that document the most. So, all right, let's get to it. I'm just gonna coat the uh, surface here that presses in a little bit of grease. Uh, be careful not to lose the, uh, the caps there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease around there. And then also a little bit of grease in the, sh the eyelet. The lower here. Now we'll just take this over to the to the to our vise. I'm gonna leave the the bearing in, and I'm actually just gonna use this socket to. Uh, that's about the same size as the outer here. That way I don't uh, press on the bearing. I'm gonna try to press this in one at a time, just like that. So let's go to the vise. All right, we're set up in our vise here. I have my uh, socket in there, and I'm just gonna press this bearing in here, making sure my shock is not touching any part of the vise and I'm just going to easily just press this in and back it out all right so we have one side pressed in all right so I put the shaft in and we're just going to press this side on and so I need to go find another socket so we can press on the edges of both of these sides of these bearings here and also don't forget to remove the plastic caps before you do anything in the vise otherwise you'll damage them so let's see what we had here for a socket size and see if I can drum up another bearing press here three quarter inch that should be pretty easy to find all right three quarter inch is about a 19 millimeter so I think that'll work let me just give it a test here See if it rests on the outer face. And it does. Right. I think we're in there. There we go. We have our shaft. We have both of our bearings pressed, and so that's our bearing fit in for the Fox DPX2. All right, so there's our bearing mount for the Fox DPX2. All right, what do you say we put this on the bike? But first, uh, as I showed before, you wanna go over to your handy dandy uh, Santa Cruz uh, tech dock and look at the shock bolts and see what it says to do. So upper shock bolt, apply grease the threads, 16. Newton meters, bottom shock bolt, apply grease to threads, 16 Newton meters. So, just bolting this bolt here. So, we're going to do that. So, we're going to grease the threads on the bolt. We're going to make sure our flip chip is in the high position on both sides. And uh, we'll tighten it down and then we'll air up the shock. Alright, I just took the, the mud guard off from the mount there. It's gonna help me uh, position the shock in there and get it through my hands and I can grab it with my other hand so that the uh, bearing end caps don't uh, fall. There we go. You just have to be careful not to lose the flip chip on the other side. All right, we're gonna leave that a little bit loose and then we're gonna move to the front shock bolt. Just twist it just a hair. Now one last double check. We have bearing caps on both sides. Flip chips in the right direction. Sago meter is on. Bushing O-rings, bushing spacers. Okay, so now we go, need to go to uh, 16 millimeters of torque on a number six hex. That's 15, a little bit over 16. That's good for the front. All right, there we have it. We have the shock on. We have 16 newton, newton meter uh, torque in the back and in the front. And uh, we'll put our rear wheel on. We'll take it out of the stand and we'll start putting some pressure in the shock. All right, just uh, installed the mud guard for the shock there back. All right, let's get our wheel on. All 
Not too bad. I like it. All right, so I have the tuning guide that was shipped with the shock, and I'm just going to go through and follow the directions and set some of the basic uh, uh, pressures and uh, compression and rebound settings for now. Tight fit on this bike. So I put about 220 in it. So let's see how that is. I will look up what they recommend for rebound just as a starting, and then we'll come back in a later video and actually adjust it. So around 220, they recommend about eight clicks. One, two, three, eight. All right, so that's the recommended. So that looks to be about 30% sag, so uh, we'll give that a try once I get better and we'll see how it works out. Alright, so there's a look at the shock, the bike on the ground, that's pretty good I think. So now we just have to give it uh, some rides, yeah, we'll give it a test and see what happens. Alright party people, hope you enjoyed the content, that'll do it for today's video. Uh, stay tuned for part 3 in this series where I actually tune this shock so we'll set the sag, we'll set the compression and the rebound and kind of dial the bike in. Hopefully when I'm not sick and my tennis elbow is a lot better but nonetheless you know what to do. Till next time, skill up and ride, band up and go.